avons déjà fait une consultation, nous avons déjà fait la présentation euh, du projet de Nine Year Schooling. Et comme je l'ai dit, c'est quelque chose qui pour une an, sur les faits, doit une durée. C'est quelque chose qui peut commencer et lui involve un paquet qui se C'est pas simplement, comme on dit là, un changement d'appellation d'un examen. C'est tout un système qui peut revoir. Ce qui est important aussi, c'est que, après nous finir de faire la première présentation, il faudrait que tout le monde comprend qui il était. Alors, à partir de l'année prochaine, là, au début de l'année, il va commencer une campagne de communication qui peut prendre diverses formes, formes euh, pamphlets, euh, clips, etc., pour qu'il nous vraiment, de, comme si, disséminer la formation correctement et vulgariser ça, tout le monde comprend qui il était, parce que nous avons besoin que tout le monde, non seulement le personnel enseignant, les heads of school, mais aussi les parents comprennent moi, c'est des scènes se vite. Que mon parent comprend qui nous peut vouloir apporter. C'est un changement qui va nous dire systémique. Le système change. Pour avoir moins d'emphase sur la compétition, moins d'emphase sur les examens, c'est surtout sur les acquis de l'enfant qui nous met de l'emphase. Et de toutes les façons, comme on nous a déjà expliqué, nous devons préparer l'enfant, nous devons build up, nous devons préparer, nous devons faire la fond, comme si euh, c'est la fondation qui nous travaille là, pour qu'il par la suite l'enfant capable de build up dessus et arrive à développer tout ce potentiel. Nous devons travailler le curriculum, le, comme si le syllabus de la formule A3, hein, grade 7 to 9. Ça peut débuter maintenant et petit à petit nous pouvons améliorer, parce que quand même nous pouvons euh, commencer les examens de la NCE en 2020, mais graduellement. Le bout de travail, get and code, comment Les examens sont déjà là, mais comme si travailler augmente le nombre de sujets qui peut tester jusqu'à ce qui nous complète le tout by 2020. So we have two documents which have been approved by the cabinet. First one is the national curriculum framework, nine years of this basic education for the public of Mauritius. And the second one is the national curriculum framework, grades one to six. But this document is unique. Uh, as far as it aligns itself with a very new philosophy and new approach which you want to undertake, not only because of uh, uh, because we want change, but because this is a national and international imperative that we move beyond the way in which we have been educating our children to meet certain needs which is felt locally as much as internationally. We are talking about uh, inclusive uh, and quality education, training and research in, in, in all sectors, curriculum review, we're talking about continuous professional development of all teachers and other partners in education. What we are presenting today, uh, the documents are mostly having to do with the year five onwards. The other issues, the other thing that we have taken into consideration is value-driven education. What we also have taken into consideration is this 21st century competencies. We talk about uh, learning skills, we talk about uh, civic skills, critical, creative, innovative thinking skills. There is also the information, communication skills, personal and social skills. So we talk about responsible citizens, effective communicators, effective collaborators, and uh, we talk about critical, creative, innovative thinkers, well-balanced individuals, autonomous lifelong learners. When you talk about uh, the uh, objectives, the uh, features of the, of, the, of the curriculum, you're talking about a broad-based comprehensive education. You're talking about giving through this education a foundation for lifelong learning for all. We are talking about giving an education which is more learner-centered and uh, which will be reducing the achievement gap. And then we are talking about uh, a continuous, progressive and consistent curriculum. There has been reordering of certain concepts, certain, certain, certain uh, contents based on, on how best children can acquire, acquire, acquire uh, uh, those acquirers concepts at different levels. And we are also looking at the quality in teaching, learning and assessment. We are also talking about enabling gender equity and accountability at all level. The way in which textbooks have been developed, all this scaffolding, how it happens at, in stages and how we go from less complex to more complex learning uh, skills being developed in the child is also, has also been taken into consideration. We have placed emphasis on something called assessment as learning. The assessment for learning and all, all learning with no formative and summative. We talk about assessment as the integral part. 
Sometimes there are questions about continuous assessment. It's not possible in our schools. But we are not talking about in terms of continuous assessment where we have to pick up 10 marks here, 10 marks there and add up everything. We are talking about continuous assessment as part and as support for teaching and learning. The curriculum offers opportunities for differentiation. When you talk about differentiation, we are talking about opportunities uh, for, ch for children of different learning abilities to be addressed. And the book itself is written in a way in which they are differentiated activities. And therefore the curriculum is developed in terms of the foundation. You will see the foundation stage, the one, two, three. The consolidation stage four, five, six, and this is how even textbooks or materials will be developed. There is what we call the orientation stage seven, eight, nine, which happens in the lower secondary. In the pedagogy, we have given a lot of attention to making people understand, to make ourselves understand that we have to put more emphasis on learning rather than teaching. And there is also uh, knowledge construction. This is where we talk about the 21st century skill. If you taught children how to construct knowledge, he will become an autonomous learner afterwards. Yeah. Second document gives you, uh, for each grade, the subject, the aims and objective of teaching and the subject, the expected learning outcome for each uh, grade. For the first time, probably we are having something which is uh, which will give you a clear statement of what learners must achieve. You have the curriculum framework that tells you where you have to reach. You have the curriculum framework for grade 1 to 6 that tells you where you have to reach after each grade. But what are the content that you use and in which order you use it to reach there? This is where you have the teaching and learning syllabus.